Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. Together we're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, The Thinking LSAT. This... The Thinking LSAT. You want me to drop the the? <laughs> <laughs> this wouldn't ever refer to it as, I mean, I do say The Thinking, thinking LSAT, LSAT podcast, podcast, but I, in that context, yeah. I wouldn't have I think said I our weekly podcast, be... The yeah, Thinking it... LSAT. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. I, I think I started saying that because that's what I usually say, but then I just said the word podcast. So I was like, nope, don't say that again. All right. Well, anyways, um, this email is from a former in-person student of mine. Oh, okay. So this is back in the, the days of Washington, D.C. classes. Hi, oh, Ben. Wow. I, I took your LSAT class in fall 2018 and listened to your podcast. And I wanted to thank you for your don't pay for law school advice. Cool. Yeah, hey, that's our advice. I took your advice and attended a non-T14 school in the D.C. area that offered me a full scholarship to attend their evening program. Um, and I followed up and he said he went to George Mason. Okay. It's just outside of D.C. It's a great school, still in the top 40 or something or 30 maybe. Before I began law school in 2019, law recruitment officers and alumni from Georgetown and George Washington the two highest ranked schools in the DC area implied that by foregoing their more esteemed programs, I was setting myself up to never practice at a large law firm in DC. Bullshit. Yeah. When I raised concerns about the potential large debt burden with a George Washington financial aid officer, he told me quote, money isn't everything oh these fucking evil bastards that's exactly what the dude told me at hastings hastings right yeah yep. it, or he he was like well you're not gonna let financial considerations dictate your you know like law school is a transformative experience and this <laughs> money you know like as if it was not real money yeah when it, no it i graduated with 160 170 thousand dollars of debt and it's way worse now 10 years later yeah um the that's fucking evil man money isn't everything oh if money isn't everything then give me a fucking scholarship yeah you can turn that right back on him yeah money isn't everything okay good well uh yeah i it's, if it's not everything then why are you the one who is trying to charge me all this money yeah Ugh. <laughs> this person continues i realized that that i realized that that was not a good response to my concerns about $270,000 in future student loan debt. 270. Yeah. I mean, that's totally possible. $60,000 a year tuition, $30,000 a year living expenses and yep. interest or whatever. And I mean, interest, yeah, at least. Yeah. Yeah. A quarter of a million dollars is really what we're talking about. And it's entirely optional as I'm sure this student is going to tell us. I just finished my school's on-campus interview program often called OCI, and accepted a summer associate offer at one of the largest firms in D.C. Okay. I'm currently ranked within the top 10%. I'm on track to graduate with no debt because I worked while in school and managed my own living expenses. I'm so grateful for the repeated advice about not paying for law school. I'm not finished with school yet, and a summer associate offer is not a permanent job. However, I know... I'm on a better long-term track because I chose financial sustainability over prestige. I cannot imagine the difference in having $270,000 on your balance sheet in debt versus not. That's just, it's, it's two different worlds. It's a life-changing amount of money. I mean, it's like either the ability to buy a house or not. Yep. It's, um, for yeah. years. For yeah. years. <laughs> uh, and I, I want to, I, I would like to encourage your former in person student. Yes, a summer associate offer is not a permanent job, but they only hire summer associates with the intention of giving them permanent jobs. I mean, yeah, they're not, they're not looking to, to do... hire you for the summer and then not actually put you to work after graduation. That's what, that's the purpose of the program it's an extended job interview and they're anticipating that you're going to succeed. So as long as you don't utterly fail, you are on the right track and you're also getting paid a good amount of money. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, got, yeah. Went to George Mason, kicked ass, 
paid zero dollars in tuition and ended up working in big law. And probably in the top 10% because you went to George Mason. It would have been a lot harder to finish in the top 10% at Georgetown. Well, I'm not trying to shit on you or anything. I'm just saying that <laughs> it's a lot easier. And now that's probably why you have this offer. Whereas if you were in the top 20% at these other schools, that may not as be may not be as exciting to them. Be the big fish in the small pond. Yep. Go to a slightly lower ranked law school. Yes, the people at Georgetown are going to look down their nose at you. Oh, mm, that's not a, well, our program is far more prestigious. Yeah. Okay. Esteemed. You could have esteemed. esteemed. <laughs> yeah. You could have gone to Georgetown and lorded it over the people who went to George Washington or, or George Mason. But instead, you chose you correctly, in our view. You took the money, you went to a slightly low ranked school, you became a big fish in a small pond, you got all the best resources that that school had to offer, you won the academic competition. And guess what? OCI comes around, you get the interviews, you get the job, you're working in big law anyway, and you're saved yourself, yeah, a quarter of a million dollars. That's well, why we do what we do. You know what's crazy? So I'm going to. I'm going to the scholarship estimator right now. Yep. Uh, you, you said be a big fish in a small pond, but yep. it's not even like George Mason is not even. <laughs> no, but relatively, I, relatively. I get it. Right. But it's not even like that small of a pond relatively. And it reminded me of our it's okay. They're ranked 41, at least as of, of this recording. Um, George Washington's 27. Georgetown is 15. Right. So, but remember our hundred percent rule or what was it called? Mm, yeah. The hundred percent rule. Yeah. So it's so, not a hundred percent different from George Washington. Definitely not. It is a hundred percent different from Georgetown. And that doesn't mean anything. That well, that doesn't automatically case. mean that just means that there is a difference in the rankings. Yep. It doesn't mean that you should, it doesn't mean that it's an actionable difference in the rankings. It just means that there is a difference. Yeah. So yeah, sure. Fine. George, my, George Mason isn't Georgetown. But what do you want to do? You wanted to work in big, big law in DC. That's exactly what you did. So great. I mean, who fucking cares about the esteem? That is that. By the way, carries no weight whatsoever as soon as you start working. No. Two years out of law school, it doesn't matter. Who's going to ask where'd you go to law school? <laughs> no one gives a fuck. They want to know what you've done with your legal practice. This person sounds like they're killing it. Anyway. Cool. Yeah, email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some hot LSAT or law school admissions news or even just lovely things like this. Thank you so much for listening.